TOA community, welcome back to the channel. Robert Linkle, trainingtheolderadult.com. I uh, saw this clip by one of my favorite people, Dr. Peter Atia, and I wanted to share this with you here just a little bit. Let's take a listen. So as uh, some of you know, one of my favorite weekly exercises is doing a set of farmer carries with a trap bar. And, you know, I've just been slowly kind of ramping up the weight a little bit. So usually doing about 20 pounds over body weight now. And the, the set is 30 seconds of carrying, 30 seconds of resting. So something that uh, Peter suggests as part of his um, his guidelines for being capable and fit and athletic as you age is being able to carry your body weight, okay? Being able to carry your body weight. So if you're 200 pounds, that would be 100 pounds in each hand. In this case, he's using a, a hex bar, okay? Or a trap bar, some people call it. And um, he's going to properly pick it up with a deadlift and then carry it back and forth. Um, as he'll say here in a moment, typically kind of does this outside and uh, there's great benefits here for full body bone density, full body muscle strength gain, but a lot of focus on grip strength and just axial loading uh, pressure in, in a good position. Okay, let's hear, let's hear some more. Uh, 20 times, so it's a 20 minute set. Um, but on a day like today when it's just super rainy outside, I don't feel like doing it outside, I'm doing it indoors. Number one, let's, let's recognize right here Peter's looking pretty jacked. Peter has not always been this jacked, okay? He, I think uh, a lot of people saw uh, Huberman and thought, boy, like, look at that physique, and Peter like stepped things up a bit. He's got great vascularity, the veins are popping, okay? So he's definitely got a good pump going right now. What he's doing is uh, a 20 minute um, superset, or not superset, a, 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 come on, a give and go, not a give and go. He's for 30 seconds, he's carrying for 30 seconds, he's resting, and he's just doing that back and forth, back and forth. So just one lift, but it's a, a two to one work rest ratio, basically, is what we're doing here. And normally he says he does this outside, he just goes in one direction, 30 seconds, sets it down, rests for 30, and then as soon as his timer goes off in a minute, he picks it up and he carries it back. And in this case, he's doing this indoors, okay? So looking pretty, pretty fit. He's got some, the traps are coming in, the pecs are coming in, you can see the abs through the shirt. This is the most muscular version of Peter I've ever seen. Um, and I mix it up a little bit, so instead of just walking forwards the whole way, I go forward, backward, because obviously I don't have enough room in here. Um, but one of the things I want to point out is even though I'm in the gym, I am still wearing shoes today. I guess you can't really see them, huh? All right, so I'm wearing what are currently my absolute favorite footwear for carrying heavy things, and that's the Ballistic Trainer by Go Ruck. Um, and this pair in particular, we're 50% off because apparently nobody likes this color. But I have this shoe in three or four different colors and I... Okay, I also have that shoe in three or four different colors. They're all black, they just have different tints to them. I have gum on one, I have black on the other, I have green on another. It's a great shoe, okay? Go Ruck shoe, all my shoes are Go Ruck shoes. I absolutely love them and he's ac accurate. They're 50% off because nobody likes that color. That's a hideous color. Uh, I guess it matches some of the, you know, the European Tour de France bike crews. I don't know. I don't know. But it is a great shoe to lift in. Um, it's a ballistic trainer, which means it's built and designed to go in any direction. But um, it has a heavy heel to it. It's got a very, very pliable toe break. So if you're going to do split squats or lunges or anything like that, it works very well for that. But it's a heavy shoe, which means it's uh, heavy, meaning it's um, it's not a... Uh, minimalist shoe. It's giving you support. It's giving you um, a little bit of heel rise so you can squat or deadlift and train in it and have a little bit of a mechanical advantage. So he's got some good points there. It's a great shoe. I love that shoe. I love them. And I have been training with so many different types of footwear for this upcoming ruck that I'm doing in June. It's an 80. So 30 seconds the backwards part is harder than the forwards part. All right. So 30 seconds is about two there and backs. And yeah, I could be doing this barefoot, but what I really want to do is pressure test different types of footwear. Okay, so you can, you can see number one, I'm not a huge fan of doing really heavy carries backwards. Um, 
I like to do suitcase carries, so a client will have weight in one hand, nothing in the other. And I like doing some tightrope or walk the plank type of stuff forward and backwards. And But you're using a, you know, not a super heavy load. He's got 20 pounds over body weight. Number one, number one, manipulating one implement is much easier than manipulating two, okay? Let me explain that. He's uh, 200 pounds, okay? So he's got two, let's say he's got 220 on that bar. If you put 220 on a bar like that, that's a fixed one unit weight. Yes, he's in the middle of it, which makes it much easier to manipulate. And it's all connected. So his body can understand, if I'm gonna turn to the left, the whole th thing is going to pivot independently. I, I basically have to manipulate one heavy load. Versus if he put 110 pounds in each hand on torpedo handles or even kettlebells in each hand, this would be so much harder to do. When you watch the world's strongman competitions and they pick up a frame like this and carry it with a thousand pounds, you're like, holy cow, that's super impressive, which it is, okay? But then when you see them pick up like 330 in each hand and struggle, you're like, that's like 300 pounds less than what you just did with that frame. Why is this so much harder? Because they have independent weights now. Each one has to be manipulated and balanced independently. They, they don't counterweight to each other. And you're not directly in the center of the load anymore. There's one on each side and one can swing forward and one can swing back and one can turn in. And the torpedoes themselves that they carry, they look like giant torpedoes. They, they, they're very difficult. If you start to steer them wrong, they bang into your legs and your knees. Not that I ever picked up 300 pound ones, but I mean, the ones that I would carry would have a hundred pounds on them or so. And they were very challenging, very difficult to manipulate. So number one, I'm not a huge fan of going backwards. You can see he has to waddle a little bit with it. It's hard to manage that much weight and have a smooth gliding gait going forward, let alone going backwards, okay? So I would only do these forward. And I, I think it would probably behoove him to benefit him to set it down, turn around, pick it up, carry it back. I would rather add some more deadlifts to this. Um, but I also know Peter's got some back issues. He talks about it in this clip a little bit, how his doctor has looked at his back and is just shocked that he doesn't have all these major issues, right, with his lower back, because apparently it's pretty tore up and pretty damaged, yet he has pretty minimal um, issues here. So let's watch a little bit more. To see how my foot feels um, under load in a shoe where it's gonna be more restricted. Now part of that is a huge benefit. I so you saw that waddle. Now watch when he goes forward, it's much smoother. You want the pattern, and obviously I need the protection outdoors. But I have to give up some capacity to spread my toes. So a pure minimalist shoe. Yeah. So quite, quite a few people uh, mentioned in the comments, you know, you should be barefoot, minimalist shoes, all, barefoot all the way. If you have issues, I can't walk around my house barefoot. I have torn, a torn ligament in my foot. I've got other damaged parts in my body. Like I, I just can't. I have to have some kind of structural support. With most aging bodies, uh, a lot of people are going to have that. But if you can be barefoot, barefoot training is exceptional. It's a great thing. If you could be in gym with your shoes off, keep your socks on. I know a lot of people will say you got to take your socks off. Let's talk about all sharing the same community workout environment. In terms of cleanliness, let's keep your socks on, okay? And, and I would do my mobilities and my prep work and maybe even my warm up with my shoes off. That would be great. You work all these different musculatures of your foot and your ankle and your knees when you don't have this cast of a shoe hooked onto your body. But as soon as you put that shoe on, now it's casted a little bit. And by casting, I just mean you have a fixed range, a fixed uh, support system now uh, adhering to your foot. And now that is going to change some things in your body and your frame and how you stand and squat and gait and et cetera. So if you can do some barefoot training, I think that would be, that would be great. On the other hand, let's keep cleanliness, you know, in, in mind when you're in the gym, if just, you know, if you don't take care of your feet and you're just walking around spreading your foot germs all over the place. So let's keep that in mind, but also in terms of safety. People go, if I drop a weight on my foot, I'm gonna drop a weight on my foot. It's gonna do the same damage. No, I've watched dumbbells land on someone's foot that has a shoe on. And those people kept their toes. Yes, they broke their foot and it was super bruised up. But I've also watched someone barefoot drop a kettlebell on their foot and their toes exploded, literally across the ground, exploded, okay? The shoe helped protect that foot so much 
Okay, shoes help a lot if you are going to drop something on there. They take a lot of the damage and they hold things together that would normally just blow apart if, if that support system wasn't there. So I think it's very beneficial to have shoes on when manipulating load, moving weights around. And that was one of the rules in our gym is if you had weight in your hands, your shoes were on. But if you were doing all your mobilities and your movement preps and all that stuff, let's take the shoes off and let's work on some foot you know, ground contact and, and, and building from there. So a couple of things come from this. Number one, Peter looks great. He's building for a ruck. He's doing an 80 kilometer ruck, which is like, I don't know, 45 miles or something. It's that's far. Um, and it's going to be a 24 hour one. So there's some big ones like that. Um, I've thought about them. They're, they're intriguing, but scary at the same time. That's a far distance. Um, I love the idea of doing these carries and uh, I don't like the idea of going backwards. So I would encourage people to go forward uh, unless you're going to use a lighter load and then manipulating both directions would probably be okay. The goal is to build up to at least half of your body weight. So all you folks out there, if you weigh 150 pounds, if you were to carry your body weight, that would be 75 pounds in each hand. Let's half that. Let's go 33, 37 pounds, something like that. That would be the goal is to be able to carry about 35 to 40 pounds in each hand and walk across the gym or carry across the gym, set them down, turn around, pick them up, carry them back. That would be the goal, not go and do that. That would be the goal. So start with 10 pounds in each hand and start working on your carries. How far should you go? 30 feet, 40 feet, 50 feet. I mean, you don't have to go super far. I've seen tests that last up to three minutes, okay? But a minute would probably be a really good thing to shoot for. And like Peter's doing here, 30 seconds and then rest 30 and then 30 seconds and then rest 30. Maybe do that a couple of times, right? Work on your foot ground contacts, rolling through heel to toes. The benefit to this loaded carry is, is great. You have a lot of axial loading. You have a lot of core activation, trap, grip strength, your traps, your delts, your lats, like your entire body is active to do this. Uh, and there's pretty minimal movement damage in a way because you're basically just taking a walking gait, actually a little smaller than a regular walking gait. So there's not a huge range of motion to exceed or to potentially hurt yourself in. The, the challenge is simply transitioning a heavy load. But that's where a great amount of overload can be applied to the body and a lot of benefit can come from it, especially bone density. So if you have issues with your gait, maybe you're not as stable as you'd like to be, try doing a suitcase carry, okay? 10 pounds in one hand and nothing in the other hand. And you'll see how much harder your body has to work to stabilize that one weight, that more muscles are now on to help you transition through your gait. You're actually more stable that way. Most would think I want to wait in each hand. Well, the weights kind of counter each other out. And that's where you'll see more people kind of wobble because basically the weights are stabilizing them. They're just transitioning. So their regular wobbly gait can still be applied. But if you take one of those weights away, well, now they want to tip to the other side. So, oh, I got to recruit more musculature. And you'll see them kind of settle in. And as they start to carry, it looks a little smoother. And maybe their steps are a tiny bit further. You've recruited more musculature due to this one overload on one side, but nothing on the other. More muscles are on than you would normally have if you were just walking without weight. So because you have more muscular engagement, you're more stable. You're more engaged. So I would take my dad and say, pretend you're carrying a heavy load in one hand, dad. And he would, he would start to walk with a gait that was more... It was more smooth and it was a little bit further and actually a little bit taller and it looked really good. And then his mind would go on to something else. He would start to talk to me or say goodbye or whatever he was doing and he would autonomically just default back into his wobbling small gait. Time and time and time of practicing this, he got better and better. So these two pieces, carrying this heavy load but also focusing on your gait ability while carrying that load, these two things work very well together while increasing bone density, muscle mass, grip strength for sure across the board. There's a lot of great value in these and I just wanted to share uh, some of Peter's message in delivering that. I hope you enjoyed this. Comments, questions, hit me up in the comment section below. If not, continue to fight your good fight against sarcopenia. We'll see you in the next one. Peace.